Hello there. This video is going to be about balancing chemical equations, which is something that causes headaches for quite a lot of high school chemistry students. Fortunately, it isn't rocket science, and there is a simple way to balance equations, as I shall now demonstrate. Let's start off with a simple example, the Harbour process, also known as the Harbour-Bosch process. This is a means of producing ammonia that was discovered by Fritz Harbour in the early 20th century. His work earned him a Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1918. Carl Bosch scaled the process up to make it suitable for industrial level production, for which he earned a Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1931. The process now produces over 100 million tonnes of nitrogen fertiliser per year, which is responsible for feeding one third of the world's population. So, now that we know what this process is, let's write down an equation for it. Hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas are combined to make ammonia. In symbols, that is, H2 plus N2 yields NH3. The double arrow indicates that the process is an equilibrium reaction that can go in either direction, and that depends on the conditions. Now, let's get, at long last, to the main point of this video, and balance this equation. In order for the equation to be balanced, we need to have exactly the same number of each type of atom on each side. The first thing we need to do is count how many of each type of atom we have on each side. For the reactants on the left hand side, we have two atoms of hydrogen from the H2 and two atoms of nitrogen from the N2. For the products on the right hand side, we have three atoms of hydrogen, but we only have one atom of nitrogen, and we need to have two to match what we have on the left hand side. We can make it two by doubling the number of molecules of ammonia. Now that we've done this, the right hand side has two atoms of nitrogen, but it has six atoms of hydrogen. We want the six on the left hand side to match this, and we can achieve this by adding another two molecules of hydrogen gas. This gives us an additional four molecules of hydrogen on the left hand side, and so now we have six in total. And now that we have the same numbers on each side, we're done. See, that wasn't too hard, was it? Now, let's look at a slightly more complicated and somewhat more spectacular example. You're probably familiar with this one, and you've probably seen it being performed at school. It is, of course, the violent reaction that potassium undergoes when it's dropped into water. So, what's the equation for this? Potassium and water react to form potassium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. That is, K plus H2O yields KOH plus H2. We do the same thing again, but this time we have three different elements to keep track of, potassium, oxygen and hydrogen. Let's count them up. We have one atom of potassium on each side, and one atom of oxygen. Hydrogen is the thing that's causing the problem here. We have two atoms on the left hand side, but three on the right hand side. One from the potassium hydroxide, and two from the hydrogen gas. We need to increase the amount of hydrogen on the left hand side. We can only do this by adding more water molecules, because that's the only place where we can get hydrogen from on the left hand side. So, let's add another one. Now that we've got the additional two hydrogen and one oxygen atom that we gain by doing this, we have to add them to our count at the bottom. So we now have two atoms of oxygen and four of hydrogen in total. Unfortunately, we've not only not got the hydrogen balanced, but we've also messed up the oxygen. This is sometimes necessary, though, as it was here. It's the only way we could get any more hydrogen, and we just have to live with the consequences. Now, on the right hand side, we've got to find one more atom of oxygen, and one atom of hydrogen. Fortunately, we can take care of both of these in one go, by adding a second atom of potassium hydroxide. This gives us the extra atom of hydrogen that we need, and also the extra atom of oxygen. But it's also given us an extra atom of potassium that we didn't really want. However, the good news is that we can take care of this immediately just by adding another one on the left hand side. Now that we have the same numbers on both sides, this means that at long last we're done. I hope this video has made it easier for you to balance chemical equations, and if by any chance you're advising for an exam in which you'll have to balance them, then good luck!